podcast, we're going to talk about the atom. All right, atoms are composed of three subatomic particles, the proton, which is positive, the neutron, which is neutral or no charge, and the electron, which is negative. All right, now these um, subatomic particles are arranged in specific places. Uh, the nucleus is the center of the atom, and this is where the protons and neutrons are. So based on the fact that the protons and neutrons are only in the nucleus, the overall charge of the nucleus is positive. Outside the nucleus, you have the electrons. So the electrons are attracted to the nucleus because electrons are negative, and the nucleus has an overall positive charge because of those protons. All right, what defines an element? Well, first off, the number of protons in the nucleus tells you what element that you have. So the specific number of protons is specific to a certain element. If you change the number of protons in the nucleus, then you just change the element, okay? All right, so how are we going to determine the identity of an element? Well, if we know the number of protons, then we also know the atomic number. The atomic number is the top number or the whole number on the periodic table. So carbon has an atomic number of six, which means carbon has six protons. All right, well, how does an element get a charge? Well, to get a charge, it's going to have to gain or lose electrons. You can't gain or lose protons because if you do, remember back, proton defines an element. So if you change the number of protons, you've changed the element. So basically, an imbalance between the number of protons and electrons is what gives us our charge. Protons are positive and electrons are negative. So if you have more positive than negative or more negative than positive, then you have an atom with a charge. All right, so if you have more protons than, um, than electrons, then you're going to have a positive atom. So in this first diagram, you see that we have five protons, five neutrons, and four electrons. So we have one more proton than electron, so we have a positive one charge. Down below, if we have more electrons than protons, then we have more negatives than positives, so we're going to have an overall negative charge. So now we have four protons, five neutrons, and five electrons. That means we have one more negative than positive, so we have an overall negative one charge. All right, well, what affects the mass of an element? Well, first off, let's talk about the relative masses of the subatomic particles. You see that protons and neutrons are about the same mass, and electrons are much smaller than that. That's in terms of kilograms, though. We usually don't talk about things uh, on the subatomic level or even the atomic level in terms of kilograms. So let's go to a unit that's a little more familiar for that scale. AMUs. AMU stands for Atomic Mass Unit. It's the common unit for measuring individual atoms, and it's basically defined as 1 twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. And we know that the mass of a carbon-12 atom is 1.992 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. Okay? So, based on that, a proton, a neutron, and an electron have these masses relatively. Okay? So, protons and neutrons are approximately 1 AMU, and electrons are significantly less than that. Okay? For that reason... Um, protons and neutrons are the only things that count towards the mass of a particular atom, okay? So to get the mass number, basically you add the number of protons and the number of neutrons. This should always be a whole number because um, it's 1.00 something, so it's just always going to be a whole number for our purposes. This number is not on the periodic table, however, okay? So you see in this diagram that we have three protons, four neutrons, and five electrons. You see that our mass number is seven. That indicates that only the protons and the neutrons count for the mass. All right, what happens if you add a proton? 
Well, number one, you just changed your element, right? Okay, so you changed the element. Which means you also changed the atomic number. All right, and what else happened? If you're thinking the mass number increased by one, you're right. So the mass number increases as well, okay? So all these things happen if you add another proton. What about if you remove a neutron? Well, neutrons only affect mass, right? So that means our mass number is going to decrease by one. Okay, now that does not change the charge and that does not change um, the um, identity of that element. Okay, now that just reminded me we forgot something up here on add a proton. Protons also affect the charge, right? So this is going to potentially change the charge. Okay, so we're just going to put down here change the charge. Okay. Because neutrons can't change the charge, but changing the number of protons can. All right, if you remove an electron, well, you guessed it, it does change the charge. It does not, however, affect the element or the atomic number or the mass number. All right, what about if you add an electron? All right, well, the only thing you're going to change here is, again, the charge, okay? So when you add or remove a proton, you're changing the element, the atomic number, the mass number, and the charge. Okay, so protons are very, very special. If you remove a neutron or add a neutron, you're only changing the mass number. If you remove or add an electron, you are only changing the charge. All right, what does the element symbol tell me? Well, the element symbol tells me a lot of things. If I'm told that I have carbon, okay, so if I'm given the symbol C, it tells me quite a few things. Number one, it tells me the atomic number, which is the top number on the periodic table. It also tells me the number of protons, because the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. And if my atom has no charge, I know that that is also the number of electrons, okay? So just knowing the element tells me a whole lot of things about my atom. All right, are protons, neutrons, and electrons the smallest parts of an atom? Well, electrons are the smallest, but protons and neutrons are actually made of smaller particles called quarks. Quarks and electrons are the same size relatively, and they're the smallest particles we know of so far. All right, here's a little more about quarks, okay? All right, over here you see quarks, um, which are these little green things, are held together by these little um, yellow things that are called gluons. All right, quarks make up both protons and neutrons, which are on in the uh, center of the atom. All right, when you're looking at a scale, you can see here's an atom, 10 to the negative 10 meters. The nucleus is 10 to the negative 14 meters. And then a proton and a neutron are about 10 to the negative 15 um, meters. And then quarks are 10 to the negative 18 meters. That's also the size of an electron. We haven't found anything smaller than that yet, but we might. All right, so remember that quarks are the same size as electrons. And also remember that when you have three quarks put together, it's going to give you a proton or neutron, depending on which quarks combine. There are six flavors or types of quarks, up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charm. They all differ in charge and stability. Strange, charge, uh, charm, bottom, and top are all highly unstable, so we don't see them in uh, very common particles that we know of. Notice that the diagrams over here of the proton and the neutron are shown. Gluons are showing um, what's holding the quarks together. And you also see that you only have U's and D's. You only have ups and down quarks here. All right, so what's the purpose of a neutron? Well, protons are all positive, and therefore they repel one another. Neutrons are neutral, and therefore provide some buffering between 
the positive protons. So you get these positive protons next to one another and they want to repel one another. You throw the neutron in the mix and it kind of gives enough space between the positive protons where they don't repel as much. Now recent research suggests that protons and neutrons are arranged in the nucleus just like electrons are around the nucleus in a ring-like structure. So if you get enough protons and neutrons, they're going to arrange these cells within the nucleus in this ring. Now there's also evidence recently that has, has, um, has suggested that protons are going to be more likely to bind with another with a neutron rather than another proton. And if you look at this little diagram, that kind of makes sense. So we have rings of protons and neutrons that layer one another, and each little subset of proton and neutron then is going to be more attracted to one another than the proton or neutron beside it.